Hello grade tens and welcome back to another video with me, Miss Martins. Today we're going to look at functions and in particular the function known as the quadratic function which gives us this graph that we see over here which we call the parabola. Now we can identify this function by seeing the x squared. So every time we see an x squared like this one over here. We know we're dealing with a quadratic function. We know we're going to be sketching or drawing or finding the equation of a parabola, which is a U-shaped graph. Let's have a look. Before we jump into the parabola, I just want to remind you of functions in general and the one that you probably have already covered in grade nine, or maybe already this year as revision, and it's called the linear function, which gives me a straight line graph that we can see over here. I can represent linear functions or straight line graphs with the equation y equals mx plus c. You need to be familiar with these things. You should know that the m refers to the gradient or the slope of the line, and then the plus c over here refers to the y-intercept. If we have a graph that looks like this, we can see that the gradient is a positive gradient, which means that my graph is an increasing slope. We can see that it goes up like that, increasing slope we can see that my y-intercept over there says plus five, which means that the graph, the function, cuts the y-axis, remember this is the y-axis, at five over here. So this coordinate is zero and five, and in order to find this coordinate over here, we make, which is called the x-intercept, where it cuts the x-axis, we make y equal to zero. Okay, so just a little bit of a recap. If we look at this, function or this graph over here, we can see that it has a decreasing slope, which makes sense because the graph, the, the gradient is negative. Okay, negative, negative gradient, decreasing graph, and we can see here that the y-intercept is negative three, which means that that coordinate over here is zero and negative three. Again, to find this coordinate, the x-intercept, we will make y equal to zero and solve. Now the parabola, the quadratic function, is completely different. You can see the shape over here on the screen. Like I said, it's a U shape. And this is what we call the mother function over here. I'm going to show it to you in a second. But let's just familiarize ourselves very quickly with the equation, which we will get into in more detail. Remember, the straight line was y equals mx plus c. You can see that this one is completely different. Immediately, we see the x squared over here. We've got an a value over here, and this refers to the vertical stretch of the graph or the arms of the graph. So how are the arms pointing? Are they pointing up? Are they pointing down? Is it closer to the y-axis? Is it more open like that? That is my a value, and we've got my q value over here, which is my shift, my vertical shift. Before we get into those things, the A and the Q and what they do in more detail, I just want to show you the mother function, which I did show you on the previous slide over here. You can see that this is what we call the mother function and all the other versions of the parabola are sort of derived from this function by changing either the A or the Q. So let's have a look. Let's see why the graph is shaped this way. It's very important to understand functions because if we look at the input values, which would be our X and our output values, which would be our Y, we can understand why the shape looks the way it does based on this function over here, based on our equation. So if we had to substitute our input value, which in this case, our first one is negative three into our X, remember when we substitute, we use brackets. So we got negative three in brackets and we're squaring it. Now remember guys, the negative three has to be in brackets. Um, I've chatted with students about this before. They type negative three squared on their calculator and they say to me, but ma'am, the answer is negative nine. And I asked them, did you use brackets? It's very important to use brackets because it's not just the three that is squared. It's the negative as well. Remember, this means negative three times negative three, which gives me positive nine. That's very, very important. So if my input is negative three, negative three in the place of X, my Y is going to be positive nine. If we didn't use brackets and you can try it on your calculator, your calculator is going to think that we're not squaring the negative, we're keeping the negative there, and we're only squaring the three. That gives me negative nine, and that's wrong. Okay, so just be careful, you need to use brackets. If we do the same for negative two, so in brackets, negative two squared, in other words, negative two times negative two, we get four. 
If we put negative 1 squared in brackets, we're going to get 1. 0 squared is 0, and we go again. 1 squared would then be 1, 2 squared would be 4, 3 squared would be 9. Do you see what's happening here with our y values, with our output values? If we take a look and we plot these, remember these form coordinates. So for example, this coordinate is 0, 0. This coordinate is 1, 1. This coordinate is 2, 4, 3, 9 and so on. Remember the x and the y, the x and the y. If we plot those coordinates, we're going to get a graph that looks like this. Let me just plot it for you quickly. Zero, zero will go there. This is a very, very, very tiny axis, so it's maybe not the best choice, but one, one would go there. Let me do it for you quickly. Okay, my function looks a little bit wonky, but you get the point. Zero, zero there. Then we've got on the, on the over here, on the right-hand side, we've got one, and one, that's my coordinate. On this side, it is negative one and one. Remember, negative one was my input value, one was my output value. And we can get a curve that looks like this. As you can see, it's a U shape like that, and it's a smiley face, so it's pointing upwards like that. Smiley face as opposed to a sad face. And I will show you why it's a smiley face and not a sad face in a second. But this is what we call the mother function. And all the other parabolas that we'll be looking at is basically starts off looking like this. And then we manipulate the Q value, which moves it upwards. We manipulate the A value, which can either move these arms, those arms of the parabola, inwards or outwards, depending on how we adjust the A value. The important stuff that we're going to look at when it comes to the parabola, well, we basically did the introduction right now, like how the function looks, how the equation looks. I'm quickly going to show you what A and Q does in this video. Then in the next video, we're going to focus on drawing or sketching the graph or the function. So I give you an equation, you give me the graph, basically. Then we're going to look at finding the equation. So I give you a graph and you have to work backwards to give me the equation. And then in your exam, they're going to ask you to interpret the graph. They want to see if you understand the graph and you need to be able to tell me about things like this. Do you know what a turning point is? Do you know what minimum and maximum values are? Increasing and decreasing domain and range. Can you translate the graph? All those things. So. For the rest of this video, let's look at understanding the equation, which is vital. If you don't understand the equation, you're not going to be able to draw it. You're not going to be able to find the equation. The first thing to note, as I've mentioned already, is that A tells me about the shape of the graph. So if A, that value over there, is bigger than zero, so a positive number, two, a quarter, ten, my graph is going to be a smiley face. Can you see here? There's my eyes. My graph is a smiley face. If that A value is a negative value, negative a quarter, negative 10, or negative 1, so negative x squared, for example, my graph is going to be a sad face. Okay, my U is going to point downwards. Then we can also look at the size of A. So is it 1 x squared or 3 x squared? And that value, ignore the negative, ignore the positive. So I'm talking about the, the size of A, okay? the bigger that value is. So here we've got 1 x squared, and here we've got 3 x squared. The bigger that value is, the closer the arms are to the y-axis. And the last thing that you need to understand with regards to understanding the equation, remember we got y equals ax squared plus q. Now that q, that plus q, that is basically a vertical shift. So over here, we've got the mother function again. We can see that our plus Q is plus zero, basically. It's sitting over there with the turning point over there being at zero, zero. The turning point is where my graph goes from being a decreasing function to an increasing function or vice versa. We will look at that in another video. But I want to contrast this with the other graph that you see over here, which is Y equals X squared plus 20 plus 20, if you look at the, the axes that I've drawn here, plus 20 means that it is shif shifted upwards by 20. Okay, upwards by 20. If that was minus 20, the graph would have been shifted downwards. In the next video, we will be looking at how to draw or sketch the parabola. And in future videos, we're going to be looking at how to determine the equation and how to interpret the graph. Please let me know what else you'd like to see in future videos in the comments below. Please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.